Hi guys, I wanted to introduce you to the 555 timer. We're going to be using this in lab four. I want to remind you, let's do it this way. I want to remind you, um, if you look in the lab four handout, you'll notice the 555 timer has some sort of prominent uh, elements. There's this chain of three resistors that are used to establish the voltages that are compared with some external voltages um, that are produced by VCC. VCC is the power to the 555 and, and of course uh, it's also connected to ground. So the basic idea is these two inputs, threshold and trigger, are used to start the timer and to stop the timer. The timer starts when trigger goes below a third of VCC and it stops when the timer goes, when threshold goes above two thirds of VCC. That's accomplished by uh, these two comparators, which compare threshold and trigger to two thirds and one third of VCC by this chain of resistors. There are five 5K resistors, so the total resistance is 15K. Um, and that's why it's called a 555, by the way. Um, and so uh, these, these two comparators basically set and reset a flip-flop, which is just a single bit memory. You guys will learn more about memories and flip-flops and logic in general when you take the digital systems class next semester. But for right now, just understand that there's a single memory here that when you set it, it remembers it's a one, and when you reset it, it remembers it's a zero. And it gets set to one when the timer starts ticking, and it gets set to zero when the timer stops ticking. Another side effect is that when it gets set to one, the switch opens, and when it gets set to zero, the switch closes. So this switch opening and closing can be used to discharge the capacitor. So the idea is we're going to use a capacitor to control the timing. The opening and closing of the switch will allow the capacitor to charge and will cause the capacitor to discharge alternately. Um, and so you can use this for all kinds of things. You can use it as a uh, to put out a pulse for a finite period of time. You can use it as a uh, oscillator that oscillates up and down all on its own and that kind of thing. Uh, also, whatever is in this memory also comes on the output. So if the memory is high, the output is high. If the memory is low, the output is low. And this output is pretty hefty. It can either sink or source something like 200 milliamps of current. So it can, it can run 20 LEDs, 20 small LEDs, or one big uh, honking LED, or maybe even, you know, a, a, a small motor, something like that, if it needed to. Two tenths of an amp is quite a bit. So that's that's the way it works. Let's uh, and I did find I found a cool little simulator that's uh, very visual. So I want to uh, try it out on you guys. Um, I want to set up the uh, elements I need. So I'm going to grab a couple of resistors and a capacitor, <coughs> uh, power supply, and and it even has a 555 already built in and ready to go. So I'll click 555 here. And then, um, so let's get that started. First, um, we need a capacitor to be charged, and we need to have a power supply here. I can just move this guy over here, I guess. And then let's uh, connect these guys both to ground. And a couple of resistors. So the idea of these resistors is they're series resistors that are used to set the timing of that uh, charging and discharging the capacitors. Now the idea is uh, we're going to charge the capacitor through both resistors, but then I need to discharge the capacitor, but I can't discharge through both because I can't short out the power supply. That'll, that'll fry my 555. So I'm going to connect that discharge to the junction between these two resistors. And so I'll be discharging the capacitor through this one resistor. This Remember that switch goes to ground. So this switch will go to ground. It'll discharge the capacitor. But then I need to turn on and off the clock based on the charge on this capacitor. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect this guy here and then also connect it here. So both the trigger and the threshold will be run by the same voltage. This is the recipe for a, 
It's called an A-stable vibrator. It's going to charge and discharge repeatedly on its own. So it, it just gets its own output. And then, of course, I need power. So I'm going to connect this to VCC. I also, there's a reset pin here. Was the reset in the original document? Yes, I want that reset pin high because I don't want the thing resetting itself on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that guy to VCC as well. And that's basically it. So let's run the thing. And you can see um, the uh, capacitor is charging and discharging. Let's go ahead and look at that voltage. So that's the capacitor charging, that's the capacitor discharging. If we look at the output, we can see that the, um, oh, that's strange. Maybe I need to, usually it, it uh, the output would go high and low. Hmm, that's mysterious. Oh, this is only one volt. That's the problem. Let's uh, let's bump that up. I need it to be ten volts. There you go. That's more like it. Now the output is going high and low. Um, so uh, let's watch that. There we go. So you can see when it's charging the. Uh, memory is set to one, the output is high. When it reaches two thirds of VCC, which is it's 10 volts, two thirds of VCC is 6.67 volts. So uh, the switch closes, the capacitor starts to discharge and the output goes low. So that's the correct behavior. And this is kind of a, a cool setup. Now for the lab four, we're not gonna be using resistors to charge the capacitor. We're gonna be using a current source and the time scale is going to be seen. What is the time scale here? This is, uh, let's see, five milliseconds. Yeah. So, so uh, the, these are transitions are happening on the millisecond time scale. In the lab, we're going to be building the circuit where the transitions happen over seconds. So it'll be uh, very different numbers, but you get the idea. That's how the thing works. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon.